I have to preface by saying that I was not a normal child growing up. But as a child and as a young person, I always found the second Sunday of Lent to be odd, to be peculiar, to be, well, simply out of place. What was odd and peculiar and out of place about the second Sunday of Lent is that we always have the gospel story of Jesus being transfigured on the mountaintop. And I always thought, why do we have that on the second Sunday of Lent? Have you ever thought that? Or am I just abnormal? Okay, I guess I'm abnormal. Nobody raised their hands besides me. That's okay. I don't mind being not normal. But pardon my going off on this for a little while. The reason I always thought it odd and peculiar and strange is because, well, because the transfiguration story is a resurrection story. It's about life. It's about glory. It's about light. And Lent is not supposed to be that. Lent is supposed to be about the desert. You remember from last Sunday, it's supposed to be about sin and conversion and all that heavy stuff. So why... Why throw in a resurrection story on the second Sunday of Lent? I've always wondered that until, of course, well, until I got a little bit older, and then it became perfectly clear to me why this story at this time of the journey. Because the church and our loving God understands our human condition. And the church and our loving God understands that you and I, like with New Year's resolutions, usually five days into it, we've already given up. We've already lost focus. We've already found it too difficult to do. So here we are, only ten days into Lent, and what does the church and our loving God give to you and I? It gives us a God moment. It gives us some hope. It gives us some energy, it gives us some glory, it gives us a vision of where it is that we are heading. Because the church and our loving God understands that life is difficult, and if life is difficult, certainly spiritual transformation is even more difficult in our lives. So it's easy only 10 days into it to realize that, well, we hoped on Ash Wednesday that we would pray more often and Maybe we haven't succeeded yet, and maybe on Ash Wednesday we made all kinds of other resolutions that somehow we would be different, we would be more patient, we would be less judgmental, we would be more forgiving, and of course already 10 days into it we've realized that we've failed miserably over and over and over again. So the church doesn't want us to despair. The church doesn't want us to give up. The church and our loving God wants to give us a vision to hold out to us why we need to do these 40 days, why we need to go through the desert, why we need to turn away from sin, why we need to judge less, why we need to experience a, a conversion of heart. So we have the story of this transfiguration, the story of Jesus being turned into something incredible, as white as light, as beautiful as one can have an eye behold upon it. My friends, the transfiguration story is familiar to all of us because we've all had God moments in our lives, haven't we? God, I hope we have. You know what I'm talking about, where all of a sudden you're going through life and something happens. There's some encounter, there's some experience, and it's like a light bulb goes off. And everything becomes much clearer, and we say, ah, God is in this moment. And then you and I, like Peter, we realize how good it is to be here, and so we want to stay there. We want to we put up a tent. We want to dwell in that moment, in that encounter, and we want to stay there like forever. Because the experience, the moment of God at work in our lives is so incredible that our hearts are filled with joy, our spirits are lifted, and why we are just filled with light and life 
and to promise. Who doesn't want to stay there? And yet we all know from those God moments, those God experiences in our life, we know that they don't last forever. And as much as we want to pitch a tent, we can't. Because life keeps moving on. And you and I keep moving on with it. And you and I keep along that journey. And even though we've had the mountaintop experience, we realize we got to go down the mountain and we have to live life. And in the midst of living life, why, it's easy to forget those God moments in our lives. And yet that is what enables you and I, I believe, to be able to get through the moments when life is difficult and when we're struggling and when conversion isn't coming easily and when our hearts are not lifted up but rather are weighed down by the difficulties and struggles of life. That, my friends, is when we need to be reminded of those transfiguration moments, those God moments in our lives because by remembering them, why then we can participate in what I like to call the divine flow. It means that as, even though life is difficult, we don't have to go through this difficult life by ourselves. We just need to allow God to participate in our lives. Allow him to enter in. Or, as the gospel story tells us, allow ourselves like Peter, James, and John, to look up in the midst of our fear and see only Jesus. For me, that's the real miracle of the transfiguration story. Yes, the miracle of Jesus being transfigured before the disciples' eyes is a big deal. But I think what's even bigger is that the disciples in their fear, overcome by this cloud that overshadows them, just like the clouds that overshadow our lives, the difficulties that you and I experience in life, and that spiritual journey that is ours where we make one step forward and we take three steps backwards. Why? That cloud that can overshadow us. Why? Then there's this voice that comes from the cloud, and that too can be frightening. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Be attentive to the voice of Christ himself. And then, well, then in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our being overwhelmed by this cloud, we, like the disciples, hopefully, hopefully we look up and we see only Jesus. Because that's who we need to see. To see Jesus in the mundaneness of our lives to see Jesus in our spouse, to see Jesus in our children, to see Jesus in our work, to see Jesus each and every day, that, my friends, is the goal. That, my friends, is the miracle that is ours today as we come forward in a few moments, as we hold out our hands, as we open up our mouths and stick out our tongues, however we choose to receive Christ, why, in that moment, Hopefully, as we see only Jesus, that moment will change and transfigure our hearts so that we will go out remembering that moment, that God moment that is ours each and every time we gather here to worship and to be fed and to be nourished so that we can go out and remembering that moment, that encounter, when our hearts were lifted, when our lives were filled with joy and with hope and with promise and with life, and with forgiveness that you and I can then go forth, living the life that oftentimes can be difficult, but living it in such a way that we participate in this flow of divine life that is going through each and every one of us. And we, we can do that, but we need to listen, and we need to keep moving forward, and we need to look up, and experience the incredible miracle seeing only, only Jesus.